Good morning. I'm Susan Zink, and I'm with Montessori for Everybody TV. But in this video, I want to talk about a little broader picture. If you're watching this, I think you're my hero. And the reason is you've decided that you want something better for your child. It might be you being a better parent than what you had. It might be you being a better parent than you were yesterday. But you've decided you're going to reach out and find things that are going to help you do better by your child. And I'm here to tell you, I think that's amazing. I have a problem with the approach that a lot of people are taking in our world today. The idea that anything's okay and everybody should just be able to do their own thing and even if that includes slapping your child in the grocery store, no, <laughs> sorry, it's not. Um, we need to raise the bar. We need to raise the bar for kindness. We need to raise the bar for how we treat everyone with respect in this world. And that needs to start with the children. I have a very particular way of approaching how we do better by the children. And Montessori has been my main teacher, but not my only teacher in that regard. But what I want to tell you here is that parents and especially mothers need to make a distinction in how they're going to do better by their children. Because I'm here to tell you it's not about doing more for them. I would be willing to bet that most of the people listening to this need to actually do less for their children. And I'll talk about that in a moment. What I'm going to suggest is it's not about doing more, it's doing well. I want to talk to you about doing well by your child. Because if you're watching this, I think that's what you're looking for. You're looking for a way to help your child bring out the gifts that he or she has. You're looking for a way to help your child be a good citizen, to be a contributing member of our society. And I'm going to suggest to you, even if you've got a little bitty child, that child can do that. And I'd like you to think about a time that you and your children have been out in the environment and you walked past someone, maybe an elderly person or uh, maybe a homeless person, and something that your child did made somebody smile. I'm going to suggest to you that your child made a contribution to somebody having a happier day that, in that moment. I'd also like you to think about maybe a time your child did that for you. I want you to start thinking about how your children can contribute in your own home especially, most especially in your own home, but also how can they contribute out in the world? How can you help them to do that? How can you make it possible for them to build their self-esteem but not by telling them they did a good job? I hate good job. 99% of the time that anybody says good job, especially to a child, it's a throwaway piece of communication. And a lot of the times it distracts the child from what they're doing. Um, I, I watched my grandson at a soccer class. And I've got to tell you, the, the woman who was running this class, this is for three-year-olds, the woman who was running this class obviously cared about these children. She obviously was enjoying being with them. She obviously loved soccer. It seemed like a perfect fit. And I couldn't figure out what was bothering me about this class. And then finally I understood what it was because my grandson came up and did a kick the way that he was asked to or he stopped the ball by putting his foot on top of it or something. And she said, good job, high five. And he didn't want to give her a high five. He wanted to keep kicking. He wanted to do that skill that she was teaching him. That's where his interest was. That's where he wanted to contribute. He wanted to get good at that. Not, I mean, he didn't think about it that way, but he wasn't interested in being talked to about what he was doing. He just wanted to do it. And I'm going to suggest that is the healthy way 
that your children build their self-esteem. They do something and they do it again and again and again until they do it so well that that's how they feel good about themselves. They have gotten so well at smiling at people on the subway that almost everybody smiles back and they know they help people feel happier on the subway and so they feel good about that. Or they've gotten so good at drawing that people get joy from looking at what they've drawn and then they feel good about that. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with giving your child unconditional love and approval. I'm actually saying that's exactly what I want you to do because not only does saying good job interfere with your child doing the activities that are going to create the skills that will organically help your child to feel good, it is also conditional. Every time you say good job, there is at least an underlying element of, and everything else is not as good, or I have to get approval from the adults in my life. So what I'm looking for is a good job not to actually develop myself. I'd like you to think about that for a minute. Think about how you unconditionally love your child. Think about how you just celebrate with them. When they are excited about doing something, you say, yay, tell me more. Or, what did you enjoy about that? Or why was that so great? Tell me why it was great. What's great about it? What did you like about it? If it's their activity, it's about them. If it's your activity, that's different. So let's talk about the way that they can actually contribute a little bit more and you can do a little less around the house. What if you, instead of picking up after them to show your love, what if you taught them how to do tidying up skills. How would that change your relationship with that child? How would that change your child's ability to feel like he or she was contributing to keeping your home beautiful and tidy and uh, a place that people enjoyed being? This is a different way of thinking about it than what a lot of people do, and especially in this age where Many people, many of the people listening to me in any way, probably only have one or two children, maybe three. And there is a, a scarcity mentality that comes that maybe we didn't have as a culture typically when five or six children was, was more the norm. Oh, what if something happened to my child? I have to keep him or her safe. What if something happened to my child's approval of me? I can't stand the idea that she might cry or tell me I'm mean. This isn't serving your children. If you're going to do better by your child, if you're going to do well, you need to give your wisdom, you need to teach the skills that are needed for that child to go out into the world and make a difference, even from an early age. Think about how excited your children have gotten in the past when they got to do something all by themselves. That's an amazing feeling. That's the kind of activities that build the people that most of us want our children to become. And we've got to figure out what's going on inside of ourselves that's keeping that from happening. What's going on with the way that we think about our children? What's going on with the way we need our children? to respond to us? And what's going on with what we understand about children? How many people know that it is completely developmentally appropriate for a child to prepare a pretty complex meal at age four or five? If the child has been taught step by step, bit by bit, that's completely realistic. Now, does that mean that you make it your child's responsibility to fix breakfast every day? No. This is not about um, asking your children to not be children. This isn't about that at all. But I'm going to suggest that your idea of what is fun for your child and your idea of what your child wants to be doing all day 
may not be a match with what's really going on inside of his or her head. So how do you get better at figuring that out? Well, I'm going to suggest one of the first things you need to do is you need to feel good about yourself. You need to accept that you're my hero, that the very fact that you want to do better by your child means you're amazing. It means that, that you want to give one of the best gifts to your community that you can, a healthy, productive, happy citizen. That's what you're about if you're listening to this. That's what you want for your world and for your children. So one of the first things that has to happen is you've got to figure out how to take care of you. If you want to do well by your children, you've got to do well by yourself. You've got to make sure you're rested because think about the things that I've been saying. If anything that I, I've said to you resonated or seemed like it might look like the way you would want to approach your child and it's at all different from what you're already doing, you can't do that and be exhausted. You cannot make that kind of change in the way that you approach your children and be exhausted. It's just not possible. You have to have the free attention. You have to have the mental energy to decide, I'm going to do this differently. I'm not going to do as much for my children, but I'm going to do better for them. I'm going to do better by them. If you want to do that, you've got to start with taking care of yourself. You've got to take care of your attitude toward yourself. You have to decide that you're a good parent. You've got to decide that this is something you've already got. You got this. Now, are you going to be perfect? No, because it doesn't exist. And yet you already are. <laughs> perfect parenting, the activities of perfectly interacting with your children are a myth. You can't do it, you will never do it, no one has ever done it, and no one ever will. But you are already perfect as a parent. This is your child. This child has been entrusted to you, and so you are, by definition, the perfect parent. But are you doing well by your child? Maybe, maybe not. I think you are at least a little, or you wouldn't be bothering with this. So how do you take the next step? How do you figure out how you're going to do well by yourself? How do you figure out how you're going to do better by your children so you can do well by them? And how do you put that all in together with the rest of your life and your day? Well, I'm going to suggest that it's not easy, but you already signed up for not easy. If you have a child and you've taken responsibility, you've signed up for not easy. If you think that it's going to get easier without you paying attention, I'm here to tell you that is also a myth. If you don't feel like everything is already moving pretty well in your home, things are pretty peaceful, your children are pretty respectful of one another and you, they, you don't feel like you're needing to do too much for your children, if that's not where you are, then it's already too hard. And you need to find ways to do well by yourself and your children that aren't as much work, that aren't as much effort, more heart, less effort. If that's something that you would like to do, I would invite you to um, listen to some of the things that I have to say. Listen to the approach that I have and see if maybe this is for you. Now, am I doing this because I am that mythical perfect parent? No, of course not. Have I parented and have I um, sent out into the world children that I feel very pleased about and that I enjoy and that I believe are contributing? Yes. Have I made tons of mistakes and have I absolutely not taken care of myself at times in the process? Yes. And that's the reason that I am putting this out there because I believe that I do have some things that I have figured out that I didn't have figured out when I first started out that I can share with you and that could be helpful for you. And that's what this is about.